Hello, welcome to week two, unit six. In this unit, we will be talking about sequences. So, you have already learned a little bit about sequence types. Just a little recap. There are several different sequence types in Python. For example, lists, ranges, tuples, or also strings. Tuples we will be introducing next week, but they share some common characteristics. Therefore, I will already mention them here. What's interesting, all these sequence types share common characteristics. So each of the sequence types contains several elements. The elements in the sequence types are ordered. So there is a first element and there is a last element. We can access all the elements in the sequences using an index. So we can access the first element of a list or the first element of a string. Similarly, we can access the last element of, an in, of a string and the last element of a list. And yeah, as the sequences contain several elements, they have a length. You know? Each list has a certain length, each string has a certain length. And besides that, there are common functions that we can use on all of the sequence types. But not all of these functions work with all of the sequence types, and that's exactly what I will be showing you in this unit. So, so again, it's showtime. Let's switch over to our Jupyter Notebooks and see what functions we can use with the sequence types. So, here we are in our notebook, and to just to repeat, you know, there are different sequence types in Python. There are lists, tuples, and ranges. You already know about lists and ranges. And strings are also a sequence type. There are a special sequence type called text sequences. I also added a link to the Python documentation down here if you want to read a little bit more about the difference between text sequence and standard sequence types. So, as mentioned in the introduction, there are common operations which you can use on most of these sequence types. For example, there is a built-in function lang, and this built-in function lang returns the length of a sequence. So this function can be used to get the length of a string, of a list, or of a range. Other functions that are quite useful are the function min and max. And this can be used to get the smallest or the largest element in a sequence. In addition to that, some of the well-known mathematical operators also work on sequences. For example, you can use the plus to concatenate two sequences. So to concatenate a sequence S and a sequence T into a new sequence containing the elements of both of these sequences. Also, the multiplication, so the star operation can be used with sequences. What this does, if you, for example, execute I times sequence, it creates a new sequence with all the elements from S, but repeated I times. Of course, that's we already mentioned in the introduction, you can access a sequence using an index. And there's also a special keyword in, which you can use to check if an element is contained in a sequence. But yeah, not all of these operations work on all sequences. For example, you cannot multiply a range with an integer, so this function so this operation doesn't work for ranges. So basically that's all the theory I want to give you as a background. So let's try this out. For the next exercise, I provided a few examples. You should now go on and play around a little bit with a string, with a list and with a range that we provided here and try out different operations and see what the result is. So, as you already know, I would now suggest you post the video, play around with this a little bit yourself, and we come back later and have a look at some examples together. So, welcome back. Let's 
have a look at this exercise together. So I deleted all the example code I provided to you um, for this exercise. So let's check different operations. For example, let's check the length operation. First, we want to print the length of our list. Then we want to print the length of our string. And finally, we want to print the length of the range I created. Then as you see, we get some results back. So the length function works on all the sequence types I have here at hand, on lists, on strings, on ranges. Another interesting function, in my opinion, is the min and max. So let's try out the max. Let's get the max value of our list. And we see the max value of the list is a six. And of course, this doesn't only work on sorted lists. So I create another list. Let's call this an unsorted list. And this unsorted list contains different numbers. Uh, I just make, made up some of the numbers and let's um, format this a little bit nicer. And of course, I can also use the max function on the unsorted list. Uh, and here I get the largest number as a result as well. What happens if I use a string as an input to the max function? So let's use our string. And though we get the letter T, why is it the letter T? Uh, that's again the Unicode representation of the characters in a string and in this representation, T has the largest value. That's the reason why we get as a result the T. And max also works for a range, of course. So our range up to 100 uh, in steps of two, what is the largest number? It's 98 because 100 is not part of the range anymore. So, so let's try one final thing out. Let's try to uh, use a concatenation. What happens, for example, if we um, create a result, which is the, the, the sorted list we have at hand and the unsorted list. And if we print this result, Uh, we get a concatenation of these two lists. Let's try this also for a string. So string s, and I concatenate this with Python is fun. Uh, and we get the list. Uh. And as a result, we get the string concatenated of the first string we had in hand and the Python is fun. This is also work for a range. Let's give it a try. Range 100. And we try to combine this, for example, with a new range um, containing the numbers from 0 to 9. And this doesn't work. So concatenation for range isn't supported. And that's exactly the error message we get down here, unsupported operation of type uh, plus for range and range. So the concatenation doesn't work for ranges. So much for this small exercise for you to play around with the different functions uh, that are available for the sequence types. Let's switch back to our slides again. So what have you learned in this unit? In this unit, we visited the basic sequence types again. You have seen that there are common operations available on the sequence types, but we have also seen that not all the operations work on all of the different sequence types. For example, a concatenation doesn't work for a range, for example. Thanks for watching and see you again in one of the upcoming units.